Hello and welcome to The Craft, a podcast for classy shit talks on important topics. This being our first episode, let's do some small introductions. Hi, I'm Sammy. I'm a B-girl from Brisbane. I also work in diversity and inclusion. I've consulted with companies all over Australia and the people and community space. Cute. My name is Juanita. (laughs) I'm a performer, choreographer and a creative director. I own my own all-woman creative company called Pink Matter. So chuck us a follow on the grab. <laughs> Shameless plug. Um, my name is Leah. I'm a B-girl from Brisbane as well. Um, I own Elements Collective, which is a dance company and this creative events space that we're in today. Um, and I work as a creative producer. Let's introduce why we're doing this. So uh, us three got together because we felt there were some important topics in the dance community um, that we, we all talk about underground privately. yeah privately mm. but we notice that they never get spoken about it's a bit publicly. taboo yes and we think they're really important and we didn't know el- know how else to frame it other than a long form type of podcast yeah or it's just I guess people talk about it but it's never been put on a platform before you know yeah. it's like people talk about these topics that hopefully we'll, we're going to bring up over the next few episodes people talk about it with their friends yeah. but then these issues just continue because yeah, everyone's not scared to make waves, there. but I think the three of us aren't, aren't really scared to do that. <laughs> <laughs> not together. <laughs> We're going to be discussing sexual harassment in the dance community. Um, it's an issue that we have noticed locally and has also gotten some more public press or social shares um, internationally. So I wanted to start with talking about maybe our personal experiences locally about what we know what's happening here. Just like a small topic to <laughs> yeah, start yeah, with, a tiny just bit. sexual harassment. Yeah. Like that's not a biggie. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like a lot of people have stories about it and I think people don't realize. Like I know definitely when I was underage and I was attending full time, like I was getting hit up by teachers that was teaching me that were older and um, I had friends that had the exact same stories. I had friends that their teachers or fellow dancers had like force themselves onto them like at parties and because dance is such a social we're such a social industry there's not really a line there and I think people forget that it's far too blurred yeah it's it's far too blurred that's not okay to do and we're all friends but you still I don't know there's still a line and I think that's what it's important to chat about what that is and I think when we all started talking to each other it was confronting when we could all rattle off names Mm -hmm. and then we were like this is something that is not okay why can we do this I think also what stemmed that conversation was that we all knew the names like Mm. if someone said something we're like yeah we all know that guy's been doing that for years you know it's always been defined as like he's a creep yeah well that guy's a creep but no one's actually calling out maybe the person that's hiring that person Mm. or the studio that they're teaching in no one's actually sort of flagging going hey you guys know that this this person has this kind of reputation. Like, do you really want them teaching there? You know? And I think that's that's for me why this subject is really important. Mm-hmm. Because too often those people get away with small little things that grow into bigger things that are really serious. And everyone's like, Oh yeah, we all knew that guy was a creep. And it's yeah. like, well, why why isn't anybody the, protecting uh, students? Are they still teaching? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if that guy hadn't been given permission to teach there again that situation wouldn't have happened Mm. yeah Mm. and it's not just it doesn't just happen at parties like it happens in the studio too like I know I've had a lot of friends take classes from a certain teacher and that teacher touch them inappropriately or say sexual things to them during class like haha funny but it's like I know for a fact it made those people feel very uncomfortable uncomfortable. yeah Yeah. Mm. but what blows my mind about the dance community like because I exist in the corporate world is that if this kind of behaviour exists from your employee, because that's essentially mm. what a dance teacher is, mm. is you're paying them for a service or a contractor, and if you're making sexualized topics or innuendos or touching people inappropriately, in the corporate world you would be fired. Mm. There's, there's no line there. Like it's not blurred, but for some reason in the dance industry it's very blurred. Like, oh, you know, because we're all dancers, we all touch each other. Like, oh, oh. Mm, yeah. like why? It's still a business. Yeah. And I don't understand how this hasn't been more defined in our community. Mm. And, and now it's getting to the point where people are getting hurt. Yeah. Yeah. Like sexual harassment is an important topic because the impact of it is really long lasting for people. 
yeah. especially if they're young, which yeah. is what has brought some of the our conversations ahead now mm-hmm. is that it's happening to young teenagers mm-hmm. um, and we're not identifying that you know, a 30-plus-year-old teacher is having inappropriate conversations with teenagers mm. and essentially grooming them mm-hmm. for sexually charged conversations. Yeah, yeah. Yep. How, how is that okay in, in the, as a dance teacher? If we even liken that to maybe a school teacher, mm. strong line that you don't do that. Yeah, because mm-hmm. there's crazy policies involved. Absolutely. And I think that's what's missing from our industry, and I guess we're talking mainly from a commercial industry, um, but I do know that, like most dance companies or dance studios are independent small businesses mm. that have have started very small and organically potentially grown into bigger things, but that education and that, those policies aren't in place at no. most of those things. And so the information that's been given to teachers or the sort of like the conversation that's been happening with the teachers about what is appropriate, even though some things you're like, surely you know that's not appropriate to do, um, I guess like people can get confused on where to go mm. next. Like, what do I do if I have a teacher mm. that I know is being a little bit weird but hasn't crossed the line yet? Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah. where do you go from there? Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I suppose, and I think maybe that's why it's a tough conversation because nobody's really defined what is and isn't okay in the dance industry. Mm. Like, yeah. is massaging okay? I would say no. Mm. It, I, I think touching people... Especially for, it depends on the dynamics, especially if it's a young student and you're mm. coming in to massage them, maybe think twice about that. Yeah. Would, a, would a school teacher go or a sport teacher mm-hmm. massage a student in a school? No. No. Yeah. Yeah, I think there needs to be this clear line between teacher, student, like what is appropriate because as we know, like a lot of, a lot of the time these crews and these companies are started by a teacher that is at the same age as yeah. their friends mm-hmm. and they decide to start a crew together and then it kind of turns into like a bigger thing and it turns into a company and all of a sudden they're running dance classes mm. and they're competing mm. and this teacher has now is now above 18 and they're an adult now mm. but they still haven't changed their ways they're still massaging they're still drinking with each other and yeah. being buddy buddy and like as we know like I don't know if a lot of people know this about the industry but like we will just get naked in front of each other mm, yes like we will straight up like costume change like strip down we're all very comfortable and it's kind of like normal I guess but mm. it's not something that we think about and it's kind of like okay we all get naked in front of each other and it's like all right yeah we're massaging each other because Obviously, what we do is very physical. And then it's like, yeah, there is that real blurred line. And I think that is, I don't know. I feel like if for me, my fellow dancer, maybe it, I wouldn't feel weird about, but definitely if someone in a leadership role yeah. mm. or like a teacher role or um, studio owner, I just feel mm. like it doesn't matter how we are friends, you need to like, you need to separate yourself. Like, yeah, I so think sorry, that's the, you yeah. can't be one of us. Like, you're not. Yeah, I think that's where that line is confusing is because quite often someone who's a peer mm. will then become a teacher or a leader yes. of that group. Yes. And so, again, you know, we all socialise together outside of the studio, we all club together, we all, you know, hang out together. And it's like I think what people are forgetting is that when you are put in a position like as a coach or as a teacher, like people look up to you, you that's know, right. and mm-hmm. you do have that – um that influence of power in some sense. Like you have an influence over that person. And, totally. Um, what's the word I'm trying to say? Well, you're put in you're yeah. put on this pedestal. Yeah. So you're put in a position of power. Yeah. And whether or not you like it or not, if you are a dance teacher, you have a position of power and you have influence. Influence mm-hmm. is That's the word what I was it trying is. to say. And how yeah. you use that you can be either, you know, used to teach classes and yeah. you, you get money for it, you actually paid for the service, but you yeah. can also abuse that influence mm-hmm. and slide into the DM of your students yeah. who, you know, think the world of you because you've been put on this pedestal. Mm. You wouldn't have access to the student's admiration unless you yeah. were on that pedestal. And by students, they can be the same age as you. Mm. It's still an influence of power. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. There's that, a power that dynamic you're not there. even sometimes aware of. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I think yeah. that needs to be made more conscious of. Mm. Um it's, yeah, like you mentioned, people growing up and coming up together, but the professional boundaries, like when you are getting paid, mm. I consider you professional at that point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you should yeah. have professional boundaries with how you interact with the people who are essentially paying you for your service. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that seems like, oh yeah, oh, yeah, we exchange money, but we're all best friends, right? Mm. Well, that can become a blur. Any other industry, 
yeah, that yeah. kind of sit- that wouldn't be okay. But yeah, something that's really a thing is like fam. Mm-hmm. Everyone, everyone in a crew or everyone that runs a dance company, it's like we're fam, 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 and it's like okay, yeah, but they're unfortunately, if you're a leader, if you're the owner, like you can't be fam. Like I know you're trying to like create that culture, and that might be like hard to hear, but like you can't. Mm. Yeah, like you can create a sense of community, but there still needs to be that professional boundary. And your students are looking up to you. So the other students coming up, if they see the teacher hooking up with the students, they're going to do that. Yep. And yeah. And it is a very like incest culture. It like is. as it's, we all know, yeah. we've all mm. been in either a crew or a company or a studio where everyone is hooking up. Yeah. Yeah. But the impacts of that as well is, you know, if that doesn't work out for them, that culture reset for them is quite huge. Mm-hmm. Or some of, you know, rumours or whatnot, but like it can create a quite toxic environment. And so whoever the professional is in that circumstance needs to look at that objectively for mm-hmm. their business and not only that, but the safety of their students and their well-being. Yeah. And I just think it's too blurred for my liking mm-hmm. and considering what's happening in our local community lately, it's time we talk about it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we're talking, we brought this up because, you know, in our Brisbane community, this is an issue that we're all talking about quietly. But mm. I noticed that it's also an issue that happens worldwide. Yeah. Yeah. This happens everywhere. And I think mm. it really kicked off for me when yeah. I saw Choreo Cookies come out with their mm. statement around addressing some of the se- mm. sexual harassment from a few years ago yeah. from some of their students and their teachers. And that was huge for Choreo Cookies to mm-hmm. put something like that out They're there. They're a big crew in the States. Oh, yeah. People, people don't know who Choreo Cookies are. Yeah, really well admired, really yeah. professional. Um, and it seems like they had to address a very serious circumstance of m- multiple cases of sexual harassment. Yeah. Really concerning. Um, and then also you had B-Girl Jilu come out mm. recently. She wrote a blog about the sexual harassment that she She'd faced. experienced, yeah. Yeah, and then I thought it was. And in- then the, the, like, repercussion of that. Yeah. Like, was exactly what she was talking about. Yeah. Well, and here's what the thing. what happened after she posted that was. I think when people, like, when Jilu came forward, I noticed that a lot of the commentary was around name and shame, name yeah. and shame. Mm. Because I feel like the community wants to just point at that one person and go, they're Oh, bad. yeah, that guy and is a creep. not the mm. rest of us. Yeah. Our community is great. It's just that one bad man mm. or whatever, which is not the case. It's a culture and community issue. Yeah. For that interaction to have happened mm. and other people saw it happen and didn't step in and say, hey, this isn't okay. It's a culture problem. She didn't need to name and shame. She was trying to raise awareness yeah. for an issue in the breaking culture, mm. which as B-girls, we have all mm. extremely experienced. Yeah. And when Jilu published that uh, blog, I know all the B-girls in Australia got in private message going, yeah. <laughs> do you think, like, we all had names who we thought it was because yeah. we all knew from international jams where we had gone, you know, I bet you it's so-and-so, I saw so-and-so do this. Yeah. Isn't that sad? Yeah. But we all did it privately. There was no way we were going to, you know, go ahead and, you know, launch this huge, you know, naming and things like that. But I think that's the issue is that the community just likes to think it's just one person, but it's actually a community issue. Yeah. And then we have really famous ones like Shane Sparks from So You Think You Can Dance. Yeah. I think he had files charged, um, he had cases charged against him. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you also have, even just here locally in Australia, there was a recent case with like a commercial jazz teacher mm-hmm. who was, it, yeah, it was outrageous what he was doing. Um, I think it was only a few years ago, but he was grooming young students, mm. taking photos, and they were young too. Yeah, yeah, it's like I don't even want to talk he about was, it. He was I will, charged, I think, wasn't he? Absolutely, mm. but yeah. it's it's not something that's uncommon. Mm. Is 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 my point? And yeah. I don't really want to talk about that case, but I'll link to it so other people can read about it. Mm. But you can see the photos that he has with all his students and how much he hugs them and loves them and the closeness and fam and things like yeah, that. Yeah. And it was incredible grooming. Yeah. And inc- and if anyone from outside the dance industry yeah. saw those images, they would flag, what's going on there? Mm. Yeah. You know? In the dance industry, it's okay to be touching students like that. Yeah. Mm. And then yeah. eventually you groom the students and the parents and you're coming over for dinner and it's just, yeah, it's not. Yeah. And yeah. like the sad thing is like we, and we all have talked privately, but we all know like 
like personally yeah. it teaches that have done this to students. Like I know a handful and we all yeah, know. Yeah, everyone a has of a story. Yeah. Yeah. That they can tell about someone, yeah. which is pretty sad. But it's not talked about no. properly. No, no. Because and we it like continues to, to yeah. happen. And those people continue to work because they're great. Like, mm. oh that oh, but that guy's like a really great teacher. Or he's the he's the greatest mm. coach. Or he's such a brilliant performer. So I've got to have him in. And yeah. it's like, well, actually no. Yeah. Like because you're still giving him a platform, this shit <laughs> continues to still happen. Yeah. People are That's scared what, yeah. to to tear each other down. Like people are like, I don't want to be responsible for ruining that person's life. Or like, no, like he's my friend. And it's kind of yeah. like, yeah. don't you care about this poor like person that's just been Harassed. Harassed. <laughs> well, I think for the victims, like the experience that they go through of somebody betraying their trust like that mm. and making sexual approaches to them and when the they're confusion when that they're happens unwanted, and then to come yeah. forward, which is incredibly brave and difficult, mm. and then to have everybody say it's your fault, and you know, it's so much for somebody to come forward. Or oh, it's not that big a deal. Oh, he was just doing this and it's yeah. like, and then, well, it's made that person I feel, feel like we have so mm-hmm. much concern for the professional dancer's reputation than yeah. we do mm-hmm. for the victims and also future victims and also the victims who haven't come forward, yeah. mm-hmm. the ones that we haven't heard about. Mm-hmm. And I, we really need to shift that. And I don't want to go ahead and do this naming and shaming spree. I'm more interested in moving forward and creating a culture where we see behaviour like this. We and call out the behaviour. Hey, that's so not appropriate for you to yeah. be drinking with your young students. Yeah. Hey, why are you sliding into their DM all the time? Mm-hmm. You know, it's standing up and saying, hey, that's not cool and yeah. nipping it before it escalates to where somebody is hurt. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think that's where I really want to shift this. Yeah. So I think with that piece, I want to maybe move on to our next guest now. Um, somebody who has done something like this and called somebody out and what it was like for them. Mm-hmm. It's a juicy. <laughs> <laughs> Mikey. 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 <laughs> hey, Mikey, do you want to um, tell us a little bit about who you are and your experience in the industry? Yes. Um, my name is Mikey Joaquin. I'm a dancer originally from uh, California in the USA. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I, I dance professionally both in Las Vegas and here in Australia, when I moved over and married that fine lady over there, <laughs> um, I am, yeah. And then, um, apart from that, I'm also a, or up until recently, was a early childhood educator. So yeah, I've been dancing and teaching kids for a very long time. Yes, <laughs> yeah, the other man we want to talk to. Um, so you had a recent experience having to call out a friend for sexual harassment, and you guys were very close. Mm-hmm. Um, what was that experience like having to put your loyalty and your friendship aside and actually like do the right thing? Because I know that would have been super hard. It was, but at the same time, because of the fact of what the, what the issue itself was, mm. is that regardless of who this person is, they're doing something that uh, is extremely damaging to developing minds. Um, having worked, having being a, both a dance teacher and an early childhood educator for a, you know, for a number of years, I think like, uh, five in education and 10 in dancing. It's, you, you, you know how things, traumatic events can affect developing minds. Mm. And even though like these teenagers are like, you know, young adults, technically, whatever, there's still very impressionable developing minds, especially as a dance teacher, mm. you're in this powerful position where you're more, more often than not in this kind of fathership role. And this person essentially broke that trust for his own personal gain, whether it was subconscious, intentional, or planned, whatever. There was grooming behaviors, and he'd made a very, he'd made a lot of very obvious mistakes that he just, he felt in his mind were, were appropriate for some reason. And even though we were extremely close, close friends, it was just, it's just, the, the, the fact is it's wrong. You, like, it, you know, ultimately, <laughs> People that are doing these behaviors are essentially trying to set up situations where they can then have relations with this person Mm. under age, whether it's when they're older or not, or if it happens. And that's just the, that's the, that's the worst part. You, these are ultimately people in these positions are, are creating, trying to create situations where they will eventually get to have relations or these with these children. And it's just, 
uh, it's not, it's, it's, the, it's like the worst thing you can be, mm. yeah. really. It's yeah. the worst thing you can be. So friendship aside, if that's, if that's something a person's choosing to do, that, that it's clear what the right answer is. Mm. And uh, I feel like, like you guys were saying before, that in this industry, it's something that needs to be addressed and that a clear line should be set between both uh, companies, crews, businesses, anything in this kind of unregulated field. And the awkward thing about that is like in that situation, a lot of people knew what was going on. There was parents that knew inappropriate stuff was going on. There was other company directors and like people that worked in that space that knew that this was going on and didn't flag, didn't call it out, didn't question it publicly or even to the person doing it. Like, again, that that's the thing that makes me rope is people knew this was going on. Mm. And it wasn't until potentially you were brave enough or the girls were brave enough mm. to come forward mm. and say, hey, this has been going on, that things escalated, you I, know? But it happened for a long, like a decent amount of time. Agreed. Uh, yeah. Uh, long story short, it was basically the, there's this kind of, because it's such a taboo topic, people don't often want to know. Mm. That's ultimately mm -hmm. it because it then breaks this kind of, mm. um, status quo that we're used to living in because it's so it's the like I said it's the worst thing you can yeah. be to you now don't accuse someone it. exactly yeah. you don't want to believe it and to accuse someone that you think highly of for one reason that being terrible person for another reason just conflicts with you so badly yeah. no one wants to be the person to blow the whistle on that yeah. and for me it was extremely hard obviously because I was very close to this guy but it, it's just when you when you know and when you see firsthand the damage this does on the victims yeah and that's the thing. No one's thinking about the victims. They don't know the victims. Mm -hmm. They don't give a shit. They mm -hmm. only care about the people that they do know. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's such a famous or he's done so much for these group of people. But I mean, mm -hmm. on the down low, he does this. But I mean, I don't know how bad it is. Yeah. But then you see the victims. When you see the victims, yeah. then you realize how bad it is. Mm -hmm. Even though they're like 16 and maybe they're like, you know, like they're developing and they're young adults and this and blah, blah, blah. Ultimately, they're still children. Ultimately, yeah. mm -hmm. they're still developing impressionable minds that can be terribly scarred by these kinds of interactions, even if it's just, even if it, if the adult in this case is thinking they're minor, mm. you know, oh, I just said this, or I just put my hand on her leg or something like that. But to her, that's like, holy crap, my dad's trying to fuck me. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Like that's, and he that's was, how he's bad it is. double the age too. Yeah. Like, and well, yeah. think about when we were 16, like that yeah. is really young. But they came from that point of fam view. Mm. Well, we just, we just fam. Yeah. You it's know. normal. We're so close. It's just dances. Yeah. Because I call. This is what we do. Yeah. Mm, but I mean, like, like, it's one thing if it's like, if it's like a group of consenting adults of similar age or something like that, we're yeah. all, you know, it's like, it's not coming from any position of power or anything like that. It's mutually agreed upon between adults, something like that. But when it's, I mean, like, when it's a, a it's teacher. It's a student. Yeah, it's a clearly a student teacher yeah. uh, dynamic with a person who's clearly underage. Mm -hmm. And then like, yeah. And I think when you, it's one of the, it's the, when you have to hear that, victim recount the event mm. you can see the fear in their eyes and how they're never this this is now ruined uh, a lot of perceptions they have about men mm -hmm. about intimacy about uh dance because that's the medium that this happened to them all these things are now ruined because of this one thing that the perpetrator thought was not a big deal yeah mm -hmm. and yeah. that's i think that's the thing that's the gravity that people need to understand yeah that it's like that's that's why it's such a big deal because it, this it scars people. Mm -hmm. It really scars people. Whether or not it's physical, there are emotional scars that then ripple through the rest of their life that some people don't ever live down. Mm. Well, I think that's why it's illegal. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it is. It is illegal. But <laughs> that's why because it, it's 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 a big deal. It and is. And I think the dance community yeah. plays it down. Agreed. Yes. Yeah, yeah well, we know that for... was really tough for you to go through. Like we <sighs> went through it with you, but. But you could see that the conflict there, you know, the friendship and the, the choice to do the right thing mm -hmm. really held deep on you. Mm. So, yeah. good well, job. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, well, thanks for having me, guys. <laughs> I will just now eat. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> well, I mean, that was like a really interesting conversation because, you know, it's something that we all went through with Mikey, with him. We watched him go through that and and it was a really like – that was a big example of like minors and the, the power of like the student teacher relationship. Mm. But I know that there's, there's situations right now that are happening where it's, it's blurred because it's consenting adults sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whether or not they're, they're being like persuaded by the, Oh, it's my teacher who's showing interest in me. Yeah. Or is it that fam situation again, where it's like, 
an organic relationship that's happening between two consenting adults that are of the same age. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but I know right now there's there's like a couple of situations where where students were making statements to to companies yes like saying hey this behavior is happening in your studios and and either the studio doesn't know how to deal with it or sweeps it away but Mm. the whatever's going on there is is enabling that that culture to to stay there you know Mm -hmm. what I mean And and it's sadly getting more victims like because that person is still in work Mm, yeah. And everyone's like, oh, yeah, we all knew that guy was a creep. And it's like, well, say something to that person, mm-hmm. you know, like say something to the studio owner or and say, hey, like call them up on it and say, I, I don't think this is a good idea that you put this teacher on anymore because you yeah. know this history and, and like make sure that they're aware of that. But there um, is that culture, like we said, of like it is so blurred that some people don't know what is appropriate and what isn't. And I'm talking mm. about teachers as well. Like mm. I'm not – I don't think all – teachers are predators and they're mm. planning strategically out. Mm-hmm. I think people just don't know. I think it's and a slippery also, slope. Yeah. And yeah. I think also some students don't know. And like I know of specific stories of teachers like stretching their students and then touching them like a little bit too close yeah. to their, you know, genitals. <laughs> and then like <laughs> even while they're stretching them, right, because it's it's normal to like touch someone by the hips or like mm. your lower back or even your – not not fully on your groin but like close to it while you're stretching. And – but. By saying something sexual in that moment yeah. while you're touching them there, not okay. But I know that has – I know quite a few friends that that has happened to yeah. in a studio by mm. their teacher. Um, you know, regardless of gender and regardless of, like, what it is, like, teacher-student roles, like, that's just not okay, yeah. you know. And I don't know. I guess that's where the – for me, that's where the line is. If Say they're two consenting adults. Mm. If one of them is in power, one of them's a teacher, yeah. and the other one's a student, I think that's a clear line there. Yeah, like, yeah if you're getting paid. Don't act a fool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 For Other real. work cultures like sometimes have policy where you can't date people in, in well, work. Yeah. Is that right? That's like, right. Yeah. I've worked in companies that if you were dating somebody or anybody in leadership or something like that, they're seeing somebody else, it had to be announced. Mm. Um, and they had to say, you know, I'm having a relationship with this person. So that culturally everybody yeah, could be look protected. Strange. That's yeah. correct. But yeah. was that leader? That was just two employees, right? That was that's just two people a, on the same level. That's correct. It was a leader and an employee. Mm. Um, Still power shifts there. Because there's a yeah. power shift there. Like if yeah. that relationship dissolved, that employee might feel uncomfortable to come to work. Yeah. If it's two employees, so like for instance in the dance world, two students, hmm. Yeah. But I would consider a teacher a leader. Mm. Yeah. And so if a leader is seeing a student, perhaps they need to, you know, talk about their relationship and it's a bit more announced so that mm-hmm. – that student can also be protective and likewise for the teacher to be protected. Yeah. Um, why is your relationship secret? Yeah. It shouldn't be secret. Yeah. 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 If it is, then maybe it's not great to be in that situation, yeah. Yeah. you know? But you've yeah. been in situations where you used to be or run a big studio. Yeah, group. I know there was mm-hmm. one, you know, when we started this conversation, like I remember just going and this was maybe eight years ago, um, you know, I had a teacher who – you know, taught an adult team for Mm. me and, you know, like we were fam, like we would, we were all the same age, we would all go out, we'd all go out drinking together, we'd socialise together. We also happened to be in a team together that travelled together and, yeah, there was relationships that happened between students and and then happened between teacher and students as well, definitely the same age group. So for me as the company owner, I was like, these are consenting people in a consensual relationship. Mm. But but because it was so public and it was so much a part of this team, it it was like really, it was conflicting for me because I didn't know how to handle that situation. Mm -hmm. Like as a company manager, I was like, oh, you know, I don't feel like I have the right to tell that adult not to Mm. have a relationship with that adult because they were teacher-student. And, you know, I mean, organically it, it kind of dissolved in its own sense. But I remember in my heart going, this doesn't feel okay mm. that this is happening, you know, under my guidance. Yeah. Um, and I guess it, it just comes back with, like, the education or, like, the policies that you have in place mm. as a company. I know immediately after that I put policies in place to go, this this kind of situation can't happen again. I mean, yeah. you know, we, we ended up not running crews anymore after that, but it's like, I guess that that's going to cue our next guest in because she's going to be a professional in in mm. this world and yeah. Yeah. she can help us like you know educate any sort of 
young studio owners out there or people that have started their own companies that don't have that education on mm. like policy writing mm. going hey have a have a teacher agreement I know so many studios that don't have teacher agreements they mm. all they do like I've signed teacher agreements but there's yeah. nothing about sexual harassment yeah. in there like it's such a taboo subject like no one even wants it's more to about make sure you rock up mm. on time yeah. and send your invoice in and this is how you get paid but yeah. nothing about like values of your space and yeah. values of your company yeah. and what what's considered appropriate and not. I just think the dance space should be for dancing and practicing and training. Yeah. It shouldn't be a place to hook up. Mm. Yeah. It's not a a dating ground. Like it 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 can be a way to meet people, yes, but it shouldn't be the place where you're somewhat predatory. I mean, but it is it is a social situation. Mm. So I know that a lot of people come to dance class or come to jams or come and be a part of a team Mm. because it's a way to meet people and it's a way to socialize. So yeah. You know, I don't have an issue yeah. with like dancers hooking up. I mm. think it's just that power dynamic of it's like having, teachers. yeah, it's being the leader and the student. I think yeah. that's where I have an issue because yeah, I all my friends are dancers. Like my my people mm. are dancers, and for me, it is very social. Mm. Yeah, but yeah, then there definitely needs to be a line because there's just been too many people. Like all my experience has been very mild, and and thankfully nothing traumatizing. But I I do personally know a lot of girls that have had traumatizing experiences mm. yeah. or been taken advantage of. Like even when I was everyone like not everyone but there was a lot of teachers hooking up with students yeah and I know that was actually becoming an issue like even the next year and the year after and not just my like mm. not just where I went but like other studios as well mm-hmm. like this is like a thing but like mm. everyone's just like hush hush like it's just what happens you yeah know? or yeah. it's exciting but so really, how do we change it how do we change that this from it being we start the conversation the we start a conversation I think okay. that something long form like this starts a conversation and people yeah. talk to each other. But I think when you see questionable behaviour, you call it. call it out yeah. or call it in. Say to the person, hey, don't think it was okay mm. that you did that. Yeah, yeah. I heard that this is happening. Like we should try to stop it from escalating to the mm. point of trauma. Yeah. And there's a victim. Or second victim. Because yeah. it's not, yeah. as, though, a victim. It's not yeah. as though these teachers are like, yeah, I'm going to be a creep. And, yeah. You know, they slowly have the slippery slope and they normalise this behaviour. Yeah. And there has to be, there's a line that needs to be drawn professionally mm. about how you interact with your students and the environment that you create around yeah. you. Mm. And so other professionals need to look out for each other and say, hey, I think, you know, that might not have been a good comment to make. Mm-hmm. To a bunch of kids about a, a funny sexual joke. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, it might be a. It's not cool. It's not fun. It's a funny joke, but hey, inappropriate. Yeah, yeah. just say it's inappropriate. Like, be the person to step up and go. Nah, that's inappropriate. Bro. And we need to have each other's backs. Like, if you hear a friend going through something, or if you hear someone like you know have their back and be like, I believe you, or like, okay, cool, let's let's. I'll help you what out. Let's go to the this. owner. Yeah. Let's go to the studio owner. Yeah. Like, yeah. I think a lot of people keep these things secret yeah well like please don't tell anyone or like they don't want to say anything to the person yeah Yeah. Yeah. and I and I know that like definitely happens so just having each other's backs a little bit more as well yeah and I think also you know as a company owner like having other people talk to other company owners that Mm -hmm. are hiring people that have Mm -hmm. a reputation saying hey heads up Mm -hmm. (laughs) This one's got a reputation. Well, Maybe think twice before you put them on the yeah, program. Yeah, and companies should have core values that they have yeah. and they subscribe to. And who you employ should also subscribe to those yeah. values. You don't need to employ them if they're the best dancer. If no, you don't if vibe don't, their values, yeah. you don't have to hire them. Yeah. You do not owe them anything. You aren't the government. You don't have to hire everybody. You have, you're a private company. You can decide who you want to go into business with. Yep. But cool. I think that's a good cue to bring on our next guest an organizational psychologist to give us some more professional advice. Yeah, let's do it. I want to introduce Manante. She's an organizational psychologist. Manante, tell us more about yourself. Um, sure. I work as an organizational consultant. I can't say psychologist right now because it comes in two business days and I don't want to get sued, but it <laughs> will be then. So we'll just call it that. Okay, sure. Um, but yeah, so I work in the field of organizational psychology, which is I work with teams and businesses about all the things that create the cultures and the teams that work effectively with each other. So that can range from empathy, it can range from culture, it can range from activity and outcomes and a whole bunch of different things pretty much everything that makes a team a team awesome yeah well you're the gal we want to talk to Mm -hmm. i want to learn from you 
Resources. Yeah. Give me resources, Manante. Okay, resources. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, all right. So there are three, if you're a studio owner um, and you're like, huh? Yeah. Uh, there are th- <laughs> <laughs> Which, Everyone listening. <laughs> everybody in the world. Yes. <laughs> Tell um, us more. All right. So like the very bare bones, basic level stuff that you need, you need three things. And you need three things which are going to protect you from being liable if something happens Mm. in-house. So what those three things are, you need a harassment policy, which is a document with words on it that you have written a part of or you have written all of or there are templates online that you can use. And what that policy says, it defines what you consider to be harassment. Mm -hmm. So I would recommend taking the legal definition, which is everywhere on Google, Mm -hmm. and then adding your own take to it as well. So for instance, say we're talking about bullying. You can write in your policy that bullying is not getting feedback on a performance even if you don't like it. Yeah. Mm. So you can be as clear as you want to be on your policy mm. on what we consider to be appropriate and what we consider to be inappropriate. Mm. And then in that policy, you define what it is, you define what it is not, you define the process that will happen if someone claims something has been done which classifies as harassment. So you say, okay, that person can come to us We interview them and we record it. We interview the person which has been stated to be involved and we record that. Then we bring in a freelance HR consultant to mediate the situation, get to an outcome. Everyone signs off on the outcome and that is now considered closed. Mm -hmm. So you outline step for step, what are we going to do if this happens? Yeah. And the reason that you do that is so that you have a playbook because if you handle every claim that comes up differently, you're liable. Mm. But Mm. you need to be seen as having a process in place that is stringent, that is concreted in, Mm. so that everyone is treated fairly, everyone is given benefit of the doubt, and in the eyes of external bodies, you have done the right thing. Mm. So that's the first thing that you need. Mm. Secondly, I always recommend you need a code of conduct, Mm -hmm. or I like to call it code of culture because that feels more fun. (laughs) (laughs) so fun and just add add glitter because it's also depressing Um, Um, so you need a code of culture and how that's different to your policy is that's really your chance as a studio owner to decide what is this space that I've created what do we believe in what is the behavior that we really want to see in the people that work for us or the people that come here what is um the group of behaviors that I would be really proud to tell people that we enact. That's your code of culture. Yeah. And you're also making it very clear in that code of culture what is the opposite of those behaviors. Mm -hmm. We will not stand for X. We will not support X. We Mm -hmm. will cut ties with whoever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's your other document. So that's the second one. And then the third thing that you need is you need proof that you have communicated both of those things. Mm -hmm. So every time someone signs on, as a team member or as a client or whatever, they need to be able to read your code of culture and your workplace harassment policy and sign off on the fact that they have read those two things. And then you need proof that you have communicated those policies throughout the year. Are there posters up around which say, this is disrespectful, this is not disrespectful? Yeah. Do you have quarterly team meetings or when you gather, okay guys, we're just gonna do a quick refresher. Who can name the 10 code of cultures? All right, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Awesome. Mm. You need proof that even though that you created those documents, they don't just sit in a drawer somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Because when someone comes forward and they say, you didn't handle this properly, mm. what they're going to look for in a business is, okay, did you have the right stuff in place? And then did people know those documents existed? Because if nobody knows, it's worthless to you. Yeah. So you, those are the three things that you need. Thank you. That's great. <laughs> you are a legend. Yeah, that is good to know. Oh, I just wanted to quickly flag one thing. I remember us talking privately um, and you saying that when we're talking about minors, this is like a whole nother thing. Like yeah. there's no sexual harassment code of conduct for minors. Yeah, yeah, because the code of conduct there is more like the law. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> It's pretty clear on that one. But no, so definitely if you're a studio dealing with minors, you need uh, other policies. You need working with children checks, obviously, like I'm not a lawyer, but um, these things that I've talked about today, they relate to adults. Mm -hmm. Um, They don't relate to where there is an instance of harassment which happens with a minor, especially Mm -hmm. if there's physicality and touching involved. 
that's a separate court case. Mm. That's not just covered in your harassment policy and it's not just covered by it. We'll do a mediation and everyone's mm-hmm. okay. Yeah. yeah. And so what yeah. would be the first um, thing that someone should do? Like if if they know about or if someone comes forward and said, hey, this has happened to me and yeah. they're a minor, mm-hmm. what is their first step to do? So, or can, um, can you advise on that? Yeah, so I'll advise with the preface that I'm not in that space. Mm -hmm. But um, the first few steps are the same. So obviously their parent or their guardian has to be involved in that process. And it does need to be taken up. If it is a criminal matter, it needs to be taken up with the police because Mm -hmm. there is no other way around what has happened. Mm. Um, And I'm talking from the perspective of a studio owner. I am not talking from if you're the parent of a child and you feel like you can just sort this out. Mm. I have no idea what that process is. Mm. So if there is an instance where um, something has happened and it does involve a minor who was unsupervised um you do need to involve the appropriate parties because that is then hedging into it's a criminal behavior that has engaged so the guardian of that child has to be made aware of what's happened they need to be involved in every step of the way Mm -hmm. of what then happens with that child and the studio owner has to accept the liability that there could be a criminal case on their hands so as far as my competency to speak on that that's kind of where it ends Mm -hmm. um but to your point, dealing with children, dealing with anyone under the age of 16, completely different bucket yeah. of fish. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cool. Okay, Manante. Can you tell us about links and resources that you can share with us? Yes. Templates, give us all the tings. Absolutely. So um, what I will share with you and then you can just make available. The links. Yeah. So mm-hmm. there'll be links to some templates to come up with a harassment policy. So that will either be an example of a business that has a great one that you can copy and paste into a Word doc mm-hmm. and change some words up, or it will be um, a real template. So you can just download it and edit it as you like. Um, I'll put some examples of really good codes of culture and codes of conduct in there so people can have a look of what that looks like. Um, don't be afraid if that's an industry that doesn't feel like it's mm-hmm. dance related or it's different. It's just an example of how people have phrased what they believe in and how they Mm. communicate that to their team. And then I'll also give you some examples of how businesses have communicated those codes of culture. So for instance, I gave the example BHP does a really good job of communicating what they deem as disrespect. So they have posters everywhere giving an example of this is a disrespectful behavior. If this has happened to you, contact this number, email this email, this is what you do after that. Mm -hmm. So I'll give you some examples of that and you can decide how to disperse. Thank you. Thank you so much. And finally, if people want advice Mm -hmm. from you or maybe a colleague of yours, can they get in touch? Yeah, absolutely. In that link, I will give you my LinkedIn link Mm -hmm. and people can shoot a message there. If it's a question or it falls outside of my competency or scope, I know a bunch um, of people who work in HR or work in law and work in all kinds of respects. So if they have questions or they need advice or they've got situations that they need help on, they can feel free to shoot me a message. Awesome. Great. Thank you so fantastic. much. No Thank you, Manante. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. That was great. Yep. She was awesome. Yep. Yeah, she was great. Well, cheers, lady, to our first podcast. Yay! Yay! We did it. We did it. This podcast is um, our first episode and entirely funded by us. We thought it was an important topic that was worth putting out there. Um, We hope you liked it. We hope you learned something. We unpacked a lot. I know I learned something. Yeah, I learned a lot. For sure. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it was good to talk about it, I guess, on somewhat of a public platform. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And although, like, obviously we can only talk about our community and our personal experiences, but, like, I think this does happen and we're going to start a little Facebook group. So if you guys want to chip in, if you have anything to say, um, please join our Facebook group, The Craft Podcast. We've Mm -hmm. also got starting an Instagram and a Facebook. We'll link all these things in our description because we're still working it out. So, um, <laughs> join yeah. in the conversation. Yes, join in the conversation. If you made it this far. We've got some, a lot of juicy topics too that we want to talk about. So oh, yeah. Stay tuned mm-hmm. on that. It's going to be entertaining. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for watching and for listening. My name is Juanita. I'm Sammy. I'm Leah. This is The Craft. Ooh. Yay! <laughs>